Hello my friends, my name is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and let's talk gaming. After many, many weeks of playing this game, I have finally completed it, and I also have the Platinum Trophy to show off to all of you as well, so I'm super, super happy. This game has been something that I've been playing for a while, and that game is Ghost of Toshima. Now, I've been playing the PlayStation 4 version of the game. That is because my wife kindly bought it for me for our anniversary. Uh, she got me this game and I got her Tales of Arise, both of us buying the PS4 versions of those games for each other. And then literally about a week or two after our anniversary, I finally obtained the PlayStation 5. So it was kind of like, ugh. Now in her case, playing Tales of Arise, there's a free upgrade for that game, which was great. But for me, there was, there is an upgrade for the Director's Cut Edition of Ghost of Tsushima which I believe does a lot of quality of life changes. You get faster kind of loading times and stuff because it buys into the whole PlayStation 5 uh, stuff that goes with it. Uh, I think you might get a couple of bonus missions maybe or a few additional things here and there. I will have to speak to my friend Lord Rex or so about that because he's played the PlayStation 5 version of this game. Um, but because I'd already played about half of the game already, I was a little bit worried about my save file and whether I'd have to start the game again or not. Uh, it turns out you, you can pretty much transfer the file over and, and just continue on in the PlayStation 5 version of the game, so I would have been fine. I didn't know that at the time, so I just carried on playing, kind of didn't want to restart anything, which is fair enough, um, and I finally finished the game. So I finished it today, I uh, finished the story, the story is amazing. Um, I'm going to go into some spoilers in this video, so if you don't want to be spoiled by anything in the game at all and haven't played it, then it's probably best to click off the video. If you wish to continue, then great. Um, I do want to speak to my friend Lord Rex or so in a future video on this channel, on a future Let's Talk Gaming, and that'll be like a feature length episode where it'll be me and him on our webcams or something, and we'll be talking about our experiences with this game, because I think this game is probably game of the year for me, even though it came out last year. <laughs> I played it this year, so you know. Uh, he did a tweet about the game saying that he thought it was game of the year and he finished the game about a week or two before I did even though I started the game before him uh, I, had a, I had a bit of a three week period where I couldn't play the game and, and stuff uh, I had stuff going on in my life you know life gets in the way sometimes so uh, I, would, I would have this video done a few weeks ago if it hadn't been for things that went on out of my control but um, yeah in the future I want to speak to him about it because there's a lot of things with this game and this video with me talking about it wouldn't do it justice because the game is one of those sort of experiences that I haven't felt in a video game probably since The Witcher 3, I think. Uh, the narrative is fantastic. They've picked a very unique period in Japanese history, which is the Mongol invasion, or the first Mongol invasion of Japan, um, which historically didn't go very well because of the uh, tsunamis and because of the storms and stuff, and then they, they lost a lot of ships in trying to transport troops over to Japan. And that's told in this story that is you know part of the story but they built the story so well uh the the main villain is done really well he is basically passed off as a cousin of kublai khan uh the guy is called koten khan he's this big burly very sinister um warrior warlord i guess and he's so calm and calculated throughout most of the story that it's kind of like, oof, you know, he's he's pretty good. He's pretty evil. I want to go and stab a, a knife in his eye. You know, he, that's kind of how he makes you feel. Apart from one moment in the story where I thought he was very stupid, um, and that's about halfway through where one of your one of your companions basically gets killed, and he has the chance to basically kill you over there and then. You're tied up, and he walks away, and it's like. You're doing the whole stereotypical bad guy thing so badly where you're just like, come on, if this was real life, you would have killed me. You know, if you see, he, up until this point, you've been so sinister and calculated and everything, and then he had the chance to kill you and he doesn't. So um, <laughs> that's like my one minor gripe with him as a character. And then you've got Jin Sakai. Jin Sakai is the main character. He is the, uh, he is basically the ward, his uncle's ward. And he... Um, there's a story going on basically with him and his uncle. Uh, his uncle, Lord Shimura, is um, is a staunch supporter of the Shogun and, and sort of the old ways, you know, the warrior code of the samurai and everything. Uh, and Jin follows him to a T 
until he sort of till the war sort of starts and he sort of gets saved at the start of the game and he wakes up and then he he goes off and and he sort of realizes that he's got to stab people in the back and cut a few throats sometimes to to survive and sometimes that's doing the right thing and of course that story goes on and they, they have their big clash they have a few really cool moments in the story i'm not going to go into them because i can't do justice in this video i'll wait till the other video but um that's a big part of the story as well is is him and his uncle sort of going head to head on these two different you know neither one is right or wrong in a sense that they're both very good reasons for for you know an approach to war an approach to sort of culture and stuff but um it's interesting to see that come to a head and culminate in, in this game so um the story really good the supporting cast are fantastic as well um some of them for example is uh is sensei Ishi ishikawa who um he's basically a bow master a, a warrior a warrior um bow master i can't get the words out probably um he has a really cool quest and and uh, there's another one lady masako uh, there's Norio, who's a who's a warrior monk. There we go. So I'm getting them confused by warrior monk. Um, and there's also uh, Yuna and and Kenji. Who Kenji is basically a thief. Some of them only have got like three missions. I think Kenji only has three missions. I think Yuna only has four or five. The rest have like nine, I think. And they basically go from the first region of the game right up until the the sort of uh, the, the end of the game almost. And these companions of yours, they're side characters. They're companions who have their own story, their own objectives, their own things going on in this world. But they're also there to help you in your quest in the story and the narrative as well which is to reclaim the island of toshima for yourself and, and, and for your people so um they're really done really well because they're quite fleshed out a lot of games do the, the whole side character thing and do a very piss poor job assassin's creed i'm looking at you <laughs> you know you can throw as many side quests into a game as you want to but unless you make the characters memorable and their objectives compelling and you know as a player it makes you want to play the next quest and play the next quest until you realize you've, you've sunk two to three hours into this one story objective from from one to to nine basically of this one character uh whereas assassin's creed they're just faceless kind of characters that don't really have much fleshed out in their story at all and, and they're quite unrelatable sometimes so um ghost of Shima does that much better and speaking of Assassin's Creed, Ghost of Tsushima has a lot of Assassin's Creed sort of elements, I guess, into this game. Um, it has assassinations, for example. If you unlock your skill tree and stuff, you can do uh, chain assassinations. And it, I gotta be honest though, after being a big fan of Assassin's Creed and, and playing the newer ones at least, um, I would say Ghost of Tsushima does Assassin's Creed a lot better than Assassin's Creed, certainly the newer ones. Uh, so that's a positive in my eyes. Um, it, it has similar sort of tropes to a lot of open world games where you've got a lot of markers and checkpoints and things like that on the map, a lot of fast travel locations, you know, this is pretty much a staple in the games industry by this point. Um, it's a lot of hidden stuff as well, there's a lot of stuff you want to explore. Uh, there's nice, nice missions on there, there's some duels, there's mythic tales, uh, you've got regular tales which probably the weaker part of the game i think the, you know the regular tales that they are basically where you'll go to a town you've got an npc and it'll be like oh some bandits killed my wife can you help me get revenge or can you help me find her body and then you go from a to b you kill two or three bandits and then that's the quest done sort of thing and um, those quests are probably the weaker element of the game i would say they're not bad by any means but they could be a little bit better if i'm being honest with you but the the mythic tales are really good the duels are really good they're, they're fantastic the way they are done and i suppose this is my bigger one of my biggest gripes is the fact that you've got like the the the, the tales with the main characters so the ones like lady masako uh, sensei ishikawa for example the story and narrative for them are fantastic right the main narrative story missions are really well done and there's a lot of good cinematography and stuff and the music is fantastic you know in the backing music soundtrack and stuff for all of those missions are fantastic right the mythic tales are great and they you have some really cool um surprises at the end of some of those those tales um and you have duels as well which is almost like a, a they're done like a western almost where you have two samurai warriors facing each other and you'll sort of be trembling a little bit with your hand and then you'll clench the sword or the katana sorry and then you pull it out and boom you're there and it's done really well but then you get to the regular tales and everything is a little bit lackluster with the quest sometimes not all the time but sometimes 
and when the NPCs are talking to you and the quest starts, um, you have a nice little opening for every quest in the game where it'll, it'll, the camera will pan onto like an object or something to do with that quest. For example, if it's like a, uh, someone's lost their child or something, it might pan onto like a child's toy or something on a river ba riverbank or something like that, right? That's fantastic. But when you get into the quest and you're talking as the character from A to B, the camera is just static on them. And it's just, you have the whole dialogue, the whole quest, and then it just goes away. I would like it to at least pan to like face to face. So one camera angle on the character, another camera angle on the NPC as they're talking, just so I'm a bit more invested in the quest. Cause I hate going to a quest, uh, activating it and then just having them talk nonsense for two or three minutes and then you start the quest. So I feel, I feel like for everything else that has so much polish in the game, this could have had a little bit more polish but then it is a side quest where it isn't as important so there's that trade-off as well but that's a small minor gripe of mine that i think they could have done a bit better with i'll be interested to know what you guys think of that in the comments those of you that have played the game um and yeah the, the, the getting the platinum trophy that was fun it's one of my favorite platinum trophies that i've got so far um it's one of my games of the year like i said at the start in the intro of this video there are some things that are challenging with the Platinum, but it's there's nothing that's missable. You might need a guide for some of the stuff. That there's some things that you'll probably need to go onto YouTube or onto a guide on Google or something just to find out a few things. Because even though it's not missable, as in you could do it in one playthrough and you haven't got to restart or replay or do a new game plus or anything like that, uh, you, you can easily miss things as far as it doesn't tell you necessarily there's a couple of hidden trophies that you can look at your trophy log and see what you got to do but there's like two or three in there that you will need to go on google and have a look at so that's something you've got to be aware of when you are playing this game if you are going for the platinum uh like i said i played the ps4 version i could i could very cheekily upgrade the game to the ps5 version pay like 20 odd quid load up my save on the ps5 and auto pop a ps5 lot of trophies and they're probably not going to do that because i'll be a waste of 20 quid if i'm not going to play the game at any length um although the ikai or iki island uh, dlc came out recently i do want to play it i will buy it eventually but i'm not going to do it yet because i want to have a bit of a break from this world focus on one or two other games and maybe in the new year come back especially if there's a sale and the dlc is a bit cheaper or something so that's kind of my thoughts on ghost of tsushima it is without doubt i think it's probably up there in my top five games of all time is it my best game of all time probably not but like i said i haven't felt about a narrative driven game uh, like this since the witcher 3 so that's a big a big lot of um of praise i can give it if i had to give it a score now, I gave Ratchet and Clank a 9 out of 10. I think this is better than Ratchet and Clank by far. But I don't think it's 100% perfect. Maybe the PS5 version is the perfect version, and maybe that's why I can't give it a, a thing score, because maybe the stuff that's added and, and things would have perhaps put it up. So I'm going to give it a 9.5. I think a 9.5 out of 10 is fantastic. Uh, it'll be the highest game that I've reviewed so far on this channel, in this series so far as well. So uh, it beats Ratchet and Clank by 0.5. I think that's a fair score to give it and yeah if you haven't played this game and you're interested in role-playing games you're interested in japanese history you're looking for a new challenge or a new thing to experience then i would 100 recommend this game anyway guys i've been dragonheart thank you for watching until next time goodbye